Hello, everybody, and welcome to this presentation of the ECL Elite Division right here on Sports Gamer. My name is Tuki, joined, as always, by my broadcast partner, Mr. Sin, for the win. And Sin, today, well, it's a bit of a rarity for us. We get to join a postseason series already in progress. It is the continuation of our two semifinal matchups, again, that started yesterday. But while we're jumping onto this bandwagon a little bit late, maybe not jumping onto the bandwagon late, but jumping into the series in progress, I'm still very excited to see what happens today. No, absolutely. I mean, this first matchup, especially Fediastad and Falunda series is tied at one game apiece, both games ending in two to one, one in overtime, exceptionally close. And Fediastad's one of those teams, I mean, got to be kind of a dark horse pick. You know, no one really thought they'd even be in the playoffs. Here they are in the semifinals and so far tied with Falunda. Let's get you guys a look at the latest results here again. Yesterday is cast. We hope you enjoyed it if you joined us here. But as Sin mentioned with those results, a uh, 1-1 split uh, in that Ferriestad for Lunda series, both a 2-1 final. Again, FBK getting their win in overtime. But Sin, on the flip side of that, we may see the conclusion of our second series today. Again, we'll cover the next two games, and that might be all that HREDS needs as they are up 2 to nothing on Granite Gaming. Of course, Granite fresh off of that round one upset over our two-seed in Sao Esports. But as we have said all season long, there are levels within this elite division. And HREDS, as our defending champions, now just two wins away from a shot at keeping that crown. Yeah, and that's an impressive, uh, very impressive performance against Granite. You know, holding them uh, to no goals in those two games played. I mean, Granite, I wouldn't say, you know, they they played Sawa. They were able to score enough to get that series win, but it was kind of tight at the end. And, you know, we were, you know, talking about their system a bit and going up against a team like one of these top teams like Atreds. Would they be able to make adjustments necessary? So far, they haven't. But we'll see what happens later today. So with that, let's get you guys a look here at the team stats as well. Uh, very intrigued, of course, and to see how it plays out in this matchup. Again, so far, it is... Uh, very, very close between these two teams in terms of the goals for and the goals against. And we'll throw it to the lineups here as well, rather than trying to dissect that. We can talk about that as that continues on. But the lineups here in this matchup here today, again, the continuation of the series, it is Afe, Malin, and Afopa Toflin for Farius Dad up top with Sebi Larson and Mr. Nipsley on defense. McSavid between the pipes. And, of course, for Afrolunda, looking to get back to the championship uh, picture as well themselves. It's Playmaker, Potslav, and Eki, Temu, Loimu on defense, Kape between the pipes, and Sin. That brings us to our center comparison, and when talking about these two, I mean, Malin has 1,000% stepped up, and Potslav has been uh, the same old Potslav that we expect, playing at a very high level. Yeah, it's very impressive to see Malin doing what he's doing. The face-offs are there. I mean, the points are there. Sure doesn't necessarily have the goals, but... He has an Afe on his wing, and oftentimes that has been enough for them this season and throughout these playoffs as well. But yeah, Potsloff is Potsloff, kind of an unsung hero in that front three, and well, doing his part, five goals in six games played. With that, though, we want to throw it over to our broadcast partner, Mr. B Major, who has been on the call a few times. He was able to get word with Mullen heading into today's action. Let's throw it over to them now. All right, we are here with... Fediestad BK's captain and center, Malin. First and foremost, thank you for taking the time to sit down and chat with us here for a few minutes. But you guys have kind of taken on that underdog role this season. You were projected to finish a little bit outside of the playoffs coming into the season due to some of that roster turnover that you guys saw coming in. Was there a little bit of extra motivation to kind of silence the doubters or was it just business as usual? Yeah, I would say it would be more business as usual. Uh, for us, we we didn't see ourselves as underdogs. We just we kind of knew early that a lot of team would underestimate us since we had a lot of changes uh, in the last uh, last uh, weeks before uh, before the ECL. But we knew that we were bringing in skilled guys and uh, and guys that uh, has uh, easy to adjust uh, into different game styles and uh, playing against uh, good opponents. So not really, it was business as usual. But of course, it's always good to to uh, <laughs> shut up the doubters. 
Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of some of those changes, despite losing some quality guys from the roster you guys had last season, the transfers that you guys brought in have really seemed to gel and fit in rather seamlessly. You guys haven't seemed to miss a beat since the start of the year. What's kind of gone into you guys being able to gel so well despite so many impactful changes to the roster? <laughs> Apparently, the Granite guys weren't that good, but nah, the yoke aside... Uh... I think, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, we knew that the guys that we were bringing in were really skilled players. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, Sebe and Nipsuli and uh, Topatopla has a lot of experience playing in the highest uh, division here in, in the ECL. So uh, we, we, knew how, we knew that they would fit right into how we want to play. And uh, also we adjusted, uh, we adjusted our game style to fit them as well. But yeah, we... No, nothing that special, uh, to be honest. We try to play as we always have and, and adjust during the season. That has always been one of our strengths, that we have uh, many different game styles and that we can play uh, different against different opponents, which we try to bring this season as well. Yeah, absolutely. And now you find yourselves against a familiar foe in Fralunda HC on the other side. There's been little separation through the first two games, and it feels like the goaltending has really been at the forefront, especially yesterday. How is it kind of being a part of a series where the goaltending has been so stout, not just from yourselves, but in your opponents as well? Yeah, of course. It's uh, You feel like you have to find some really spectacular chances to score or... Maybe not that spectacular, but you have to have some bounces where the goalies are like, will have to uh, have a really hard time to uh, to estimate where the puck will will uh, will arrive. But uh, I would say that, in, especially in this game, you have to just have the bounces with you uh, in these kind of games where the goalies are are really hot. So uh, yeah, it's it's special if you try to you you cannot like do some regular goals that you normally can do against. The keepers that are not at this level, but uh, we tried to find a way. And of course, yesterday, a lot of the goals were just some uh, ridiculous bounces uh, that the goalie couldn't do uh, that much about. So, yeah, we try to we try to find a net in uh, every way possible. Yeah, absolutely. And um, final question here. Obviously, you especially, you guys have faced Ferlunda many times in the past, not just this season, but in a few other seasons as well. What do you think is going to be a key for you guys to pull off what would be really a massive series win for you guys mm -hmm. in the semifinals? Yeah, of course, we have to have a good goaltending, as we always have, and also good de defense and try to, like, everyone has to take responsibility in all zones. Uh, and of course, in this game, as I mentioned earlier, you have to have those extra bounces. Uh, every game can can be decided by some random shot from the, the random play. So just have some some luck, good defense, and responsibility from everyone. And I think that we have a good chance of winning this series. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's been a lot of fun to watch so far. And before we wrap this up, is there anything you'd like to say to your fans, any of the viewers, or even your opponents mm -hmm. in Fralunda? Uh, well, uh, it's, it's always fun that you're following us, um, <clears throat> especially some of our uh, supporters are always in the chat and everything, and we really enjoy it, and we'll try to to, to bring, uh, the, to take us to the final this time and see what we can do there, and uh, yeah, looking forward to, to uh, have you in, see you in the chat. Yeah, absolutely, Nilo Malin, thank you so much for your time, and best of luck to you guys here the rest of the series. Thank you, thank you. All right, so Stan, always good, of course, to hear from, you know, the players themselves while they're in the midst of this series. Uh, I know for me, one of the takeaways, uh, kind of him alluding towards the fact that, hey, sometimes you score nice goals, sometimes you don't. It's just kind of the way the game goes. What was one of the takeaways for you out of hearing from Malin there? Um, just kind of how at ease he was, not really perturbed by kind of, you know, what's happened in the past and that, you know, he's confident in this lineup. Obviously, McSavid's playing you know, as McSavid does often in the playoffs here. And I mean, they got to be feeling good after how close those first two games are. They're able to limit that for Lunda offense and get a few goals of their own. Absolutely. Now, of course, Sin, you alluded towards it as well. And of course, our, our lineups here, you get a look at the wingers in this series. Afe has been absolutely outstanding, as he typically is in the postseason so far, next to Fopa Toflin. Uh, the only winger in this matchup 
that is below a point per game. And, and Sin, it was postulated by uh, someone within our inner circle as to whether or not the struggles of that could be the handedness mm-hmm. of Popotofa. Maybe similar to what we had seen from Havu a few years ago, where Han Salina was up on the wing, but the handedness played a little bit of a factor. I'm kind of intrigued to see what we get out of the rest of this matchup from him. Yeah, well, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I was definitely going to. It, it has to be brought into question at this point. You know, as you mentioned, the only guy who is sub point per game, Handiness, can be a big factor. It's one of those things that sometimes it seems like it doesn't play, you know, too big of a factor. You want to do what you're comfortable with. But those angles, the one-time options, the threat that can already come. You already know Ferlunda is keying in to shut down Afe. But when you have, you know, Fopa Toflin over there who doesn't have that one-time Handiness, you think that threat level maybe decreases even more. Absolutely. Now, of course, you see the four there. We were also able to uh, to get Eki in on a call as well. We'll throw it over to that again. B Major once again conducting this interview. Let's see what Eki had to say. All right. I am here with none other than Eki, one of the stars of the NHL community and the right wing for Forlunda HC. Firstly, Eki, thank you for taking the time to sit down with us and chat for a few minutes. Uh, you guys were able to knock out Havu, obviously, in the quarterfinals in what I think many would consider one of the tightest sweeps that you're ever really going to see. Uh, how do you feel going into this, my final series already playing against an opponent like that early on? Uh, yeah, that was very, very close series with Havu. Nice that we got it done. Um, yeah, I feel I feel like this series is going to be very similar. At least the first two games were super. Super tight, but uh, yeah, hopefully we will we will get it done. I'm very confident. I uh, I think this year we haven't really gotten the full our best best out of ourselves gameplay wise. But uh, yeah, this is this is a time in Asia semifinals where we kind of should step up our game a bit. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you guys have shown that ability plenty in the past and you guys are kind of seen as the favorites going into the series and a lot of guys have you penciled in to make yet another ECL finals appearance but Fedistad being a team that have kept things close not just in the regular season but throughout the first two games of this series specifically how do you guys feel the way that the series has played out so far through the first two games? Um, Fedistad is a team who plays differently to anybody else in the community with Afe with the fast counter attacks looking Looking for those breakaways a lot. Uh, they have a very specific uh, game style, which is kind of hard to play against. But at the same time, uh, uh, at least myself, I'm very, very frustrated if we'll if we'll uh, lose this series. And I think I think me, us losing this series will only be up to our mistakes like if we if we do too many mistakes then Faristad will beat us but I have a or we have a pretty clear understanding of what we need to do to win yeah and I love that you said that because I kind of segues perfectly into our next question Fetty is that being a team that you guys obviously are very familiar with playing against each other not just many times a season but even in playoffs in the past, there a team that saw a lot of roster turnover this season. There's there been any differences between the teams that you've seen from them in the past compared to this season? Yeah, uh, so I think their game style is still very similar, but they've just gotten better individual players. Foppa Toflin, the right wing, in my opinion, is the best Swedish 6v6 player. He's one of the best uh, players in 6v6 in general. I think he's just never had the hunger to play... Uh, Playing very top teams, I guess now now Faristad counts as that, but like before this, so uh, glad to see him being in the in the semifinals. Their defenseman, uh, I feel like, is the biggest upgrade though, especially with the puck and Ipsuli and Sebel Larsen are, are an upgrade to what uh, what Faristad have had before, and they they really fit uh, fit what Faristad is uh, trying to do on the ice. Yeah, and goaltending's been a really big part of the series so far as well. There's not really been a lot of separation between you guys in the first two games in the series. How does it feel being in this kind of series where goaltending has been so stout, not just from yourselves with Kape back there, but with McSaved on the other side for Fedia's stat as well? Yeah, we always trust that uh, Kape is going to make the most important saves. And uh, McSaved has proven for many years to be uh, one of the top goalies in, in Elite also. Um, 
Max Saved is a very aggressive goal. He kind of goes post to post a lot. Kind of, kind of feels like you, you should score against him a lot, but he always always seems to find a, find a way to be in front of the puck. Yeah, absolutely. And um, last question here. Don't want to keep you too long. Obviously, you guys are a veteran team. You're experienced really just about everything in the ECL when it comes to playing in these big games. And you seem to bring that sense of composure to where no matter what the situation is, you guys always seem to find a way in those pressure moments. What's the mindset for you guys going into tonight as that pressure really does start to ramp up the more we get into the series? Yeah. Um, like you said earlier, I, we are the favorite coming in. So obviously for us, it would be nicer to now win this series 4-1, win both of the games tonight. I think uh, I think it's really important for us to win both games tonight, kind of get the momentum uh, on our side here. Uh, I think uh, the closer, the more the se- this series stays uh, e- equal, equal, uh, the advantage kind of goes to Faristad, like m- mindset-wise. But uh, we played, uh, we played for many ECLs basically with the same roster. We've been in tough situations, so whatever happens, uh, we should be re- be able to bring our uh, best game onwards and. Then uh, we live live with the results. Yeah, man, absolutely. Well, it's been a lot of fun to watch so far, and thank you again for taking the time to sit down and chat with us. And before we wrap up, is there anything that you'd like to say, whether it be to your fans, the viewers, or in your opponents in Fediesta? Um, not really anything specific. Thank you, uh, Frölunda fans, for supporting us throughout the series, and uh, hope you enjoy. Hope everyone enjoys the rest of the the series. Yeah, well, I can definitely say you guys have delivered so far. Thanks again, Naki. Really appreciate it. Best of luck to you guys the rest of the series. Thank you. And so interesting there to hear from Eki as well. I'm going to go complimentary uh, towards Feriestad uh, while also perhaps being critical of some other people who aren't directly tied to this series at this stage. Uh, your one takeaway there is we get a look at the defenders here before we're really kind of talking about these four. Yeah, I mean, hard to kind of ignore that part, but definitely you hear what he said. They really want to win these two games to try to feel like they have the momentum back, and I completely kind of agree with that. If you if you let Fediestad hang around, maintain, you know, get, get into a tied series with Ferlunda or, you know, heaven forbid, take that lead, uh, for, uh, you know, going into the next games, I mean, anything can happen at that point. So, yeah, Fediestad definitely in a good spot, and they've been playing incredibly well defensively. That has a lot to do with, I mean, Mr. Nipsey, Sebi Larson, great on the shutdown. Perhaps not as much as offensive threat on the back end, but their shutdown, helping out McSavid, has been massive. And they're actually, for you know, by numbers alone, outscoring Tamu and Loimu. But, you know, point percentage, about as, you know, close to even as you could get. Absolutely. Again, with these four, uh, four very, very capable defensemen on both sides of the puck. And, of course, the... The main four, uh, you know, or the main two on, on their sides, I suppose, that you look to help out their goaltenders. And while it might not have been my best segue towards these goaltenders, Sin, I needed to get there somehow because look at these numbers. Now, it's one of those things that uh, we, you know, have kind of had the debate. You look at the end of season, uh, you know, polls that, that we put together that we send out towards the teams. That way, again, player voted polls for end of season awards like best forward, best goaltender. Cape is a guy where if we had best goaltender be decided on, say, the top 10 goalies and save percentage, Cape wasn't in the top 10 for netminders yeah. in the regular season, but it wouldn't exactly be fair to not have him in the conversation for goalie of the year as he has shown in the playoffs so far. But McSavid, as well, you've already mentioned him, has been absolutely outstanding. Yeah, I mean, both these goaltenders are are really something else. You know, elevating their play in the postseason when things get tough. Cape's number numbers simply improve. You know, he's facing more shots. You know, and and you know, with a lot more regularity than he is in that regular season. We talk about it. Some of the lower save percentage of, of goalies on those upper echelon teams is simply because the only kind of chances that sneak through sometimes are those breakaways and odd man situations. Which, if those are sometimes the only chances you're facing, it can be tough to maintain a higher save percentage. But you see him doing that here in the playoffs. Absolutely, Sin. The teams are matched. We are just about. 
ready to go. Game number three of this best of seven series. Again, tied one apiece. We will not see the conclusion of this series here today. That will come tomorrow, regardless of who has the lead, or even if it's a 2-2 split. Uh, we simply have no way of knowing exactly how this is going to go. No, and that kind of, you know, makes makes these games all the more important. You know, it's a big, big kind of momentum swing there. You could see at least some of the players there, some without the cams activated, but, you know, kind of uh, their own pregame sort of rituals. Uh, and, you know, the focus has got to be there. I mean, you think about Ferisat, both these teams have been in similar positions like this. Maybe you could argue, you know, Ferlunda has a tiny bit more experience, but what I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of people focus, but also loose at the same time. And I think that's key. And, of course, we've heard from Falunda in the past. Someone like Kape, very, very important to their success just for keeping the, uh, you know, the, the tone a little bit light. But it is Falunda in on the attack here to start off. They are in the whole red unis this time out in game number three of this best of seven as they're able to take that one away. Let's see what Farius Dad can do now going down the other way. Bit of a uh, loose puck pick up there for Sebi Larson as he sent one across. Dangerous chance there. Good job by the defense to take it away as Eki dumps it over the far side. Playmaker, the one-timer. And Sin, that uh, kind of summarizes the playmaker style. You never know what he's going to throw on net. Chance there on the doorstep. And unfortunately for Tamu, just couldn't really get anything on the shot. Yeah, trying to pull the trigger right there. But that was Sebi Larson right in his face, not allowing him to do a whole heck of a lot with that puck when he got it in an extraordinarily dangerous area. But here he comes. Tamu for Eki on the short side. Think he hit the side of the goal. You saw it. McSavid was cheating over to that far side and nearly got caught. I mean, it was a couple seasons ago when Tamu joined this for Lunda team. I mean, his impact, you know, cannot really be understated on that left defense side. I mean, they lost Jay Toro, but Tamu came in and, you know, really has been filling that gap and kind of giving some new looks to Ferlunda that I'm really sort of enjoying. It's, it, it looks, you know, incredibly good for that team. Absolutely. Again, that's been one of our biggest things over the past couple of seasons, the transfers and just how much that affects these teams. For Lunda, the same squad that went to the finals last year, and of course you saw it in the pregame, all the talk about FBK and the changes made to their lineup, including Mr. Nipsley, that right defender, who stepped in, I believe, with less than a week to go before the start of the season, and what a fit for the club he has been. They do have trouble gaining the line. Here's Eki now. That left-hand side, let's see what he can do. Good protection, tried to go around the back for Potsloff. Again, the you know, the team captain at one point in time. They consider Kape the captain now. And, of course, Potsloff at the very least still wearing the golden helmet, as you see teams at leading score in the playoffs so far. He has it, dishes for Tamu, short side. That time, no cheating from McSavid. Potsloff slow to get up, though, after a bit of contact. See what Fairy's dad can do. Bit of space. Sebi Larson running out of room. One timer for Nipsley. Great block by Pleamaker. That pushes us over the halfway point of this first period. Again, the next two games in this series will be covered here on this broadcast. A little bit later on, the continuation. Good opportunity for Fopa Tolflin. Couldn't pull to the back end. The continuation of H Reds and Granite Gaming. H Reds looking to punch their ticket to the championship round yet again. Playmaker dumps that one in. Let's see what Sebi Larson can do with Eki on his back. A scramble for the puck. Good stick. Lift was able to take that one away. Patience now. Sebi Larson taking his time. Just trying to get people moving there. And it works. Here's Afe with a burst of speed on the left-hand side. Goes across for Fopa Toflin. Temu was able to take it away. And that's one of those angles that actually benefits Fopa Tolfin being the righty on that right-hand side. The pass across right there. When he's, you know, kind of on the forehand, you can get a different shooting lane. Sometimes a bit of a better kind of passing lane to feed that across. Afe tried it, unfortunately. They couldn't quite connect, but you saw that speed of Afe coming into play on that left wing side. Potsloff has that one poked away from him. One timer blocked down by Playmaker in front. Had another swipe at it. One day able to keep this one alive. Eki again has it knocked loose. Nervous moments for the goaltender. He makes a blocker save there. Does McSave it. But nervous moments when you have that puck being knocked loose every other second. Kick back to the point. Lomu right back down for Eki. A shot again for Tamu. Doesn't find its way to goal. There's a nice little delay by Tamu right there. Tried to change the angle just a bit. Get McSavid. You know, he doesn't overslide a whole heck of a lot. So you got to try to change the angle on the shot. See if you could find a gap. Didn't work out on that one as that was blocked aside. 
Final 30 seconds here of the first period. Here's Playmaker poked loose by Nipsley at the last moment. And a pass intercepted by Mollen. Five seconds to play. Does Ape have time or space? It's Fopa Toplin who's stripped of the puck. And that will do it. Chances for both sides, but still yet to find our opening goal. I mean, that was an interesting first period. As you said, chances going kind of both ways. A lot of sort of back and forth action, some sustained pressure from Fulunda, but kind of what you expected. Fetistad trying to, uh, you know, mount their counterattacks and get some pressure, and Fulunda just kind of trying to gain that momentum in the offensive zone as they like to do. Zero registered shots from Fetistad. You can see just how tough it was for them. Tamu and Loimu, despite Tamu, you know, jumping up into the play every so often, they're doing a great job of recognizing when Afe wants to leave that zone early and get back into it. You're seeing several kind of one-time looks coming out from Fralunda, some in-tight chances there, testing the angles, testing how McSavid is going to slide. So far, so good. He's passed every test, even Playmaker right there, sending that uh, kind of a slap shot off of the end board bounce on net. Nothing so far has beaten McSavid, but Fralunda, you'd have to say in the driver's seat, at least as far as stats go, but when you're facing a team like Fetiastad, we all know how much that simply doesn't matter when they get one of those crazy slap passes. Second period underway. Again, a reminder, the first two games of the series both ending with a 2-1 to one score line. Very close series. Great chance. Eki might have gotten to the rebound. It was knocked loose at the last moment. Chance there. One-timer stopped. Potsloff denied as well. Great saves early on. Looked like Eki might have wanted a deflection bid there, Sin, too, as well in that first opportunity. We've seen him score like that a ton this season. We absolutely have, and he was there and also had that follow-up chance on the rebound. Sevi Larson, Mr. Nipsley, though, right there. They've done such a good job in this one so far of eliminating those opportunities. Another chance here for Linda threatening early on. Loimu's chance broken up by Afe. Couldn't handle that puck cleanly. Loimu now back for Playmaker. For Linda right back in on the attack. Potsoff tried to go back to Playmaker. A bit too much traffic. Couldn't find its way to him. Now down in the corner to McSavid's left. One back by Loimu. One timer, they score! They've been looking for it all game. Sin, they finally find it. Tamu with the bomb from the point and a one to nothing lead for Fralunda. That's exactly what they needed there. The pressure was mounting there. They needed to capitalize on that again. It just takes one bounce, one counterattack. You, hear, you heard it from the player interviews. They get it right there. A pass over to Tamu. They've tried that a couple times that time. He's able to bury it there. On that far side, cutting back across the goaltender. one nothing here for Fralunda in the second. Big, big moment here in the early stages, as I mentioned, of this second period. Tough now for FBK to find a way back. I mean, it was one of those things that Eki had mentioned. They, you know, the confidence, of course, that Fralunda have, and rightfully so, but the idea of... We are more likely to beat ourselves with the mistakes we make than Feriestad are to beat us just based off of the what they perceive as the skill difference between the two teams. You know, it puts FBK in an interesting situation here where, you know, you're trying to prove them wrong, obviously, as the, you know, the underdogs in the series. Granted, the term underdog might not be fair at all times, but right now McSavid having to stand on his head as well. Yeah, he absolutely is. I mean, it's hard to argue with their with their sentiment so far as, you know, Ferisad just trying their best to counterattack and then being sort of snuffed out. They're finally going to get it in, in low. We'll see what they do with it. Worth noting as well, uh, for Lunda scoring first in both of the two games so far. Yet again, the series is 1-1. One one. Another 1-T one just wide. You saw McSavid, how far out he was to challenge that. Loima with chance as well. Rolanda getting those defensemen involved early on, willing to step up into the play. It's making things happen. They're looking to be the more dangerous of the two teams in terms of scoring attempts. Lose puck shot just wide. May have deflected off the opportunity for Sebi Larson. Playmaker hands it off to Eki. Knocked loose. Afe is there to take it away. Gets the pass to Fopo Toflin. Back over to Afe. Great movement here from FBK. Malin, perhaps a pass that wasn't intended for him. Will go all the way back down. McSavid plays it, turns it over, and they score. A mistake that you simply cannot make here in the postseason. It's two to nothing for Fralunda. Oh my goodness. I I I simply can't believe it. That's not a, like you that's just simply not something that we see McSavid do all too often. It was it was not a bad decision to go play that puck. Playmaker looked like he could have won the race. It's just 
I, I think he misread the situation, or Playmaker kind of did a nice little sort of fake of his own, and that is exactly what Fedestad did not need in this situation, and that is... That kind of takes the wind out of their sails as well. That's a tough one to sort of come back from as a player. You see just an incredibly self-inflicted wound that happens like that against a team like Frelunda here. And you know they're going to try to jump on it right here. Simply cannot give a freebie up to a team like Frelunda. You just can't do it. We'll see what FBK can do now. I mean, you heard it from Mullen in the pregame. You know, they have McSaven to thank for uh, really the reason as to why they're here. You could say, I mean, we've seen, you know, below average goaltending sink good teams. McSaven is what turns this into a great team, into a top four team. But at the same time, uh, even the best goalies are prone to mistakes like that. And again, no worse timing here. Hotslot trying to hand that one off to Eki. It goes to the corner. Popa Tolfin now, again, going to try to get something going for Ferriestad. As I mentioned, they trailed in both games of this series so far after giving up the first goal. Don't know if they'll be so fortunate as we get a bit of, uh, let's call it spiciness there at the end, Sin. Yeah, you got to love it. I mean, they, they got to try to, you know, get in the head of Afe. They they always want to key in on Afe. I'll always think back to the interview last season when these two teams took each other on, I believe, in the semifinals as well. And Eki said, it's Afe. You have to shut down Afe. It's all about Afe. And, uh... You know, do you do anything you can? Shut him down on the ice, maybe try to get into his head post-whistle as well. Playmaker now here in the corner, fresh off of what might as well have been an empty netter. Good save again. Save it looking very good in terms of his angles and willingness to come out and take on the shooting lane. It's Afe now here for FBK. That shot just wide foot, but Toflin tried to shovel one on. Nipsley as well over to Mullen, just out of his reach. This puck along the board, poked back down by Mullen, chopped around the back of the net by Eki. Nipsley steps in to get it. Afe tries to find Fopa Topla. Nipsley can't hold. Playmaker has a step in on alone. One second save by McSavid at the death here in the second period. Remember that one if Ferriestad are able to battle back. Sin, what a save. I mean, that's an absolutely massive save there. A goal right there would have... I mean, nearly sealed the deal in this one. A three-goal deficit in the third period against a team like Falunda. Maybe just too much to come back from. But that was a, a that was a massive save right there. Pleamaker getting in on the breakaway after, uh, you know, Mr. Nipsley was, you know, understandably a bit lower in the zone than he normally be, normally would be. Trying to hold that puck and get another shot, get another chance. You know, some kind of momentum heading into the third period. They only have one registered shot, unfortunately. He, uh, the, 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 the puck kind of runs in the plea maker who's able to get that play uh, or, and, you know, start the breakaway down at the other end. We're going to get another look at it. I, there was, it looked to me, it's hard to see. I'm not going to get a, you know, too close of a look at it, but it was a slight adjustment from plea maker right before he went back to that screen right hand side. And I think McSaban sort of played on that and tried to, tried to feed that passing lane. And it's just simply, unfortunately in that case, didn't work out and, that's where they find themselves down by two. They're going to have to find a way to generate offense or shots or something. The Hail Marys are going to have to start now. Chance for Playmaker. Good save. All I could see there is that maybe McSavid wanted to hit the winger instead of the defender, but it targeted the defender. But regardless, it's on you to get rid of that puck. Here's Eki. Tries to send in front for Potsoff. He's there. Playmaker back to Eki. And another gigantic stop by McSavid. Sin, I mean, despite the mistake earlier, he has stood on his head. Incredible stuff. Yeah, I mean, that was a crazy play from Forlunda. That was a tic-tac play. The three forwards there, passing it back and forth, finding Eki there for that low sh uh, low slot shot, just turned away by McSaban. And, you know, he just simply needs some goal support. Again, only allowing two. Does keep your team in a position to win. So Feriestad just need to find a way to get some offense. Here they go. They do gain the line. Maul in a little bit of trouble. Nipsley tried to go down low. Tamu takes that one away. Now Pleamaker fights his way through. He'll run out of space, though. Behind the back of the net, takes the hit. Pass out by Sebi Larson. Now it's Fopa Tofu. See what he can do. The spin, the pass. Nipsley has it poked away by Tamu. Now it's Malin again, just nowhere to go. Shut down defense from Fralunda to start the action here in today's broadcast. Again, ECL Elite Division semi-final action. 
The first matchup we'll cover here again is HREDS and Granite Gaming later on. The action brought to you by our friends at Wilhelm. Go on, Lockerty. And as always, ST Hockey is for London. Right back into the attacking zone. And Pleamaker had a chance at that one. It's Potsloff in the corner. Goes around. Pleamaker there to pick that one up. Now Aki. One timer deflects off of Potsloff in front. A little bit of trouble there for Mr. Nipsley picking that one up in the corner. Yeah, we're almost to the halfway point of this third period. Two, you know, just time is flying by if you're on Fedestad. The offside there will not help them. And I don't think we've seen a single slap pass come out for it. It might not be there. Again, we know Forlunda's going to try to be ready for it. But at this stage, I mean, it's you're kind of getting into that desperation mode. I think we're going to start seeing uh, some of those Omahas coming out, even if it's not, you know, the, the perfect scenario for it. Afe is going to start looking to leave that zone early almost every possession. Here comes Tamu has help. It's Eki. Back in front, just off the mark. Great attempt, great creativity from Eki. And Sin, for as much as you want to point to that second goal, you know, being a bit of a backbreaker, ultimately it doesn't matter, you know, McSavid's mistake, unless they're able to at least get a single goal. That goal ultimately isn't really a deciding factor. You could talk about maybe the morale of the team, but the scoreboard doesn't make much of a difference as Malin can't get that shot through. Lemu tried to hit Potsloff, nowhere to go. Here's a Fopa Tofa. Holding on to it, cutting back, and again, what a play pass across, and just out of the reach of Mr. Nipsley. As here, DDD one-timer blocked down. Mullen tried to go to Afe in front. Good sustained pressure here from Ferriestad. Their best of the game, arguably that one through the blue paint. The pass from Mullen. Here's Afe, tried to get it over the middle. Pleamaker frees himself in all alone and poked away. The flying poke check from McSavid again, keeping his team in it. Now with five minutes to go. Mullen in front, loose puck, kicked back over to the half wall where Playmaker is able to pick it up. Playmaker has been a thorn in the side of this Ferriestad defense, as you would expect. Two on one now, perhaps developing here for Forlunda. Pass across, kicked away by McSavid. Eki couldn't handle that one clean. Sin just three and a half minutes to go here. Yeah, and they, they need a goal. They, it has to start with one. They need something here at the time is their biggest enemy right now. They had, they had some nice sustained pressure, unable to find the goal, and now it's a struggle to get back in the zone as Forlunda just trying to lock it down. Eki still fighting for this one here in the double team. Nipsley able to grab it. Now Mal and Eki, I'd say very lucky to have not uh, had to serve a tripping penalty there. Bit of a uh, bit of poke spam. It's recovered, final minute now here in the third period. Puck dumped into the FBK zone. They are down by two. Here in game number three, again, game four coming up upon the conclusion of this one. So don't go anywhere. It is the start of our coverage here today for the Elite Division semifinals. Potsloff dumps that one and now 40 seconds to go. Playmaker almost won that foot race, gets the puck back from Afe. What a mistake. This play will look to kill off a little bit more time. Ipsley's pass intercepted by Playmaker. Has to be the player of the game. Here's Potsloff looking, holds it down low. Eki. A couple of options, elects to hold on to it. Still fighting for it and dumps it back in. A clinic from Forlunda here in the final minute. Puck intercepted and finally FBK gonna try to get something going. Eight seconds to work with Tamu strips him of the puck. He's in all alone and he's denied by McSavid as well. And that will do it. Two to nothing, the final score. And if you're Forlunda, you're lucky it wasn't seven. Yeah, I mean, Forlunda, were incredible there in that game and Fedeistad unable to get a single goal marker and I mean yeah you said it that the kind of uh, self-inflicted wound that second goal ended up not mattering a, a lick because Fedeistad simply couldn't bury one they finally got some chances in that third period but too little too late when you finally get chances against this for Linda team guess what you also have to get that puck past Kappa and that is no easy task here but McSavid didn't look really phased by the mistake he made. He kept, I think I counted like four massive saves uh, in that third period alone. And then obviously that breakaway at the end of the second period, he was still locked in, still giving his team a chance. It's again, you only allow two goals as a goaltender. That's still giving your team a chance to win. For Unfortunately for Fetiestad, they weren't able to find the offense in that one. And for Forlunda, they take that series lead now two games to one. I mean, Sin, I slightly misspoke there uh, at the end by saying that uh, for Lunda, uh, really more so that they were unlucky. It's two F teams, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, you, I mean, you're gonna make those mistakes every once in a while. I don't even think anyone pointed it out, but it's one of those things where I'm like, ah, yes, that that doesn't sound right, and it wasn't because this was. I mean, aside from a few brief glimpses for FBK, this was one of the most one-sided playoff games I can recall. And truly, I mean, while again, this will be the play that stands out, that turnover by McSavid. And, you know, I do think that uh, Nick and Engels in, in chat there read it right. I think McSavid, he went to the left first, thinking he'd get Playmaker to commit and then wanted to go back to the right, and Playmaker simply did not yeah. fall for it. He was perfectly in line right where he needed to be again we apologize for any webcam freezing shout out to again trying to get a uh a, you know a, a cross uh a transatlantic uh stream going sometimes you end up with some of those issues but i mean sin what what else can you say to that yeah just that was as dominant of a performance truly like that could have been seven eight to nothing there were what three if not four breakaways i think it was three yeah how often uh, have we seen three clean uncontested breakaways let alone in a playoff game it's tough to do yeah and usually you're often often seeing it with uh maybe fetty out of the one to get it just because off is you know so speedy but playmaker in that game was was phenomenal he was everywhere especially as a kind of defensive threat in their own zone forcing those turnovers at the blue line and that's massive right there because that that really takes away the ability of fetty to try to spread out the Ferlinda defense when they do gain the zone, which was a rarity in that game. And I think, you know, for Linda have a lot to prove, at least to themselves. I think everyone kind of expects them to go back to the finals or, you know, at least, you know, make a splash. But, you know, they haven't been happy with their performance this season. Probably not so much in these playoffs so far either, especially at the beginning of this series. I can kind of sense that from that Eki interview. So that game was definitely maybe more, you know, good and complete game and i would expect them to try to carry that into the next one and score even more goals absolutely so with that again game four coming up in just a matter of moments before then we'll throw it over to a quick word from our sponsors and then we will be back boy it just will not freeze on a, on a favorable on a favorable image of yours truly we'll be right back stick with us Minkä päällä lakukastike maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. All right, everybody, we are back. Big thank you for sticking with us. Again, a big thank you as well to our friends at Wilhelm Kovan Lakritz and ST Hockey. You would have heard me mention them before. And again, a big thank you for them for sticking with us all season long. Sin, what we got to do is what we've done in previous casts. You got to pose for a good, for a good still frame, or you could get turned into the void. I mean, yeah, I heard you're the void. things is coming back soon, so. <laughs> <laughs> well. Glitch in the matrix, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. And now I've turned into an arena. Here we oh, go. There we go. Hi. Hi. How are you? We're back. We have fun here, everybody. Uh, so, Sint, let's let's try to get this show back on back on the rails here. Not that we've ever allowed it to be derailed, but at the very least, uh, in talking about this matchup and what's going uh, to happen next, I I think it just kind of goes without saying. For Lunda takes a three to nothing series lead, Feriestad, they're in big trouble. And I was able to see that yeah. from the other side of the void that I just disappeared into. It was a three uh, to one lead for For Lunda, and that carried them to a series victory. So I've seen the future. FBK need to tie the series up here in game four. Yeah, they absolutely do. Um, you, you simply are not likely to come back from, you know, that three to one series lead from For Lunda. And. You know, it, you can kind of think about why, you know, why what happened to Fetty said, were they demoralized by that second goal? But I, I don't know. It w I don't I don't believe they had a whole lot. I would say after that happened, they had a whole lot more jump in their game. I mean, that third period was their best period. They had no registered shots in the first, only one registered shot after two periods. It was just a case of Frilunda doing the thing that they do is dominating a game and they are always able to kind of do that in most series at least a couple times. And 
for Lunda, what they're going to want to do now is do the same thing here in the next one. And I'll kind of go back to, I didn't see Fetistad attempting kind of what we consider their bread and butter to be with some of those kind of stretch plays, the Omaha plays, the slap passes, etc. It's, you know, it's maybe for Lunda's doing a good job of kind of, you know, uh, guarding against those and completely stifling off it when he wants to leave the zone. But either way, if you're Fetistad you, you know, and your team is, you know, built to that, it's kind of hard to get a, get away from that at this point in the season. So I'm not too sure what they're going to do, but we have to see more than we saw in, in in the last game. It was just, you know, a brief amount of time in that third period where they're able to get some chances. Other than that, it, what, there wasn't a whole lot going for them offensively, and that's what really killed them. Again, it could have been a one nothing game. That second goal didn't matter. Yeah. And again, a reminder, everybody, you see what these two teams are playing for already guaranteed some money for that top four finish, but even uh, essentially doubling up that win total. If you make it to the championship round, of course, this being our winter season, the spring season, sin, that'll be here before you know it. Uh, it's it's going to be a, a couple yeah. of weeks off in March. And then here we go. We're going right back to it with our spring season, loving uh, this new format. You get a look there at the teams involved and, Indeed, this is about as must-win of a game for FBK as they will have all season long, and I think they know it. Yeah, I, they're going to be locked in right here. McSavid was simply fantastic, and now it's up to the rest of the boys to help him out, give him some goal support because he was making those saves left and right. I mean, uh, I think he stopped every breakaway. They didn't score on a he breakaway, did. I don't think. Correct. He stopped every single breakaway as Kafe there tested a little bit early on. Again, FBK, as you would expect, in their home green. We'll see what happens here. I mean, again, just a, a very tough situation for them. A phenomenal game from their netminder as a one-timer there. They score! Sabi Larson starts off the scoring just 58 seconds into it. Don't count out Feriostad just yet. You talk about immediate responses. This is exactly what you mean. The smiles coming out now. That's got to be, you know, a bit of relief from them as that 1T ability kicks off. Sebi Larson buries it off of the draw, and that's the benefit of just getting that puck in the zone. Sometimes, as you saw, just throwing that puck on net. You know, if it doesn't go in, maybe creates a face-off, maybe opens up a door for something like that to happen. And Fedestad up on the scoreboard first, one nothing. Uh, it was mentioned in chat in game one, and Nikki Dangles just mentioned it there again. The quote-unquote 1T spam and the 1T meta. But here's the thing, Sin. They tried quite a few of those plays. There's the quick out for Afe. It ended up being on goal. FBK tried quite a few of those plays. But it's hopeful now with a chance after the poke check from Malin. Temu takes it away. I'll get to make this point eventually. Yeah, they tried those field. plays. Now, yeah, right? <laughs> Here, you know, over for Temu. Pops off the extra pass. Maybe a little bit ill-advised. McSaven was able to stop that attempt from Playmaker. I will now finally say they tried those one tees. Berlunda's arguably the best team in the world at blocking those shots. They didn't get a single one through, from my recollection, in game number three. But the very first attempt at game four, before Berlunda can really kind of get settled into their defensive shell, they are able to find the space. Yeah, definitely. And that's exactly what you have to do before Berlunda can sort of get set again we talk about it. you have to try to spread them out because they won't do it naturally they're not going to give you those gaps in their defensive scheme naturally you're going to have to do what you can to, to 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 create those yourself absolutely so here we go now for Linda back in on the attack already had a great chance in response to that opening goal loose puck decky now Tamu bounces around doesn't find its way past McSaven well put Toflin back from Mala. Now Sebi Larson again, the goal scorer, his first of the playoffs. He had nine in the regular season. Was tied for third amongst defenders. Sin, our first penalty of the day. It goes to Loimu for that extra bit of contact. Farius to add to the power play. Yeah, he won the initial battle, but as you said, it was that extra bit of kind of shoving there further away from the puck, which will make him sit in the box. This is a huge chance for Farius to double up their lead on the power play. See what they can do here off the opening draw. It was swiped back into his own zone by Playmaker. Loose puck now to the far side where Sebi Larson will be able to settle it down. And here comes FBK. Head of steam. They're working on the left-hand side with Fopa Toflin. Now it's Mullen for Sebi Larson. Again, back to the captain to the point. D to D work. Dangerous moments with Playmaker there, but showing no fear. Our FBK. Mullen has nowhere to go. It's kept in by Sebi Larson. 
And back down the mall, and the shot off the leg of the defender. Nips the lead for Copa Toplin. One timer. They fake it. Another try. Loose puck in cleared. As it was picked up in the slot. Close calls for FBK, but no opportunities really presenting themselves as they tried, I think. Uh, was that was that an attempt from Eckes? And I admittedly looked away for half a second. Thought he was trying to draw out the icing. And no, it was uh, well, it was Mick Saban who grabbed that puck uh, in the back there and, sh and tried to get it up the ice quickly, and they simply didn't connect on it, which killed the rest of that. But yeah, I think they're just trying to kill some time at the end there by letting that puck drift as Fedestad, I believe, was a bit offside. There you go. One of those things, of course, you got so much going on. You look away for half a second, you're going to miss something between these two teams. I don't recommend it. Malin offside there as the stretch pass went just a little bit too far. Again, FBK scoring the opening goal of this game just 58 seconds in. Goal from left defender Sebi Larson. Let's see what happens here. Malin, he did jump on the draw a few times in game one, or at least game three, the first game of this broadcast. Does win that one clean. And now here's Offit. Held off the score sheet, as was the entirety of the team in game number three. But Patoflin, a rocket pass just out of the reach of Afe there. It wasn't a bad play right there coming off the corner boards. Kind of went for a one-touch, just got a bit too much power on that, and Afe couldn't grab it. This puck here recovered now by Potsloff. They have numbers, pass in front, bouncing around. It did hit McSavid there. He keeps that one out as well. Turned over here, though, a bit too fancy. From Fopa Toflin, Pleamaker's pass broken up as he gets knocked down to the ice. Damn it. Four pots off. Another good poke check there by Nipsley. Still for London chipping away at it. See what Eki can do. Time and space. Goes back to the point. Quick give and go. And again, try to work it down low. Pleamaker. Four minutes to go in the period. He's knocked off the puck. Let's see what Afe can do. Now Mullen. A little bit of space here. Had to go short side. Might have been poked off of him. Still Kafe's there to make the stop. I think that was the back checkers right there who got a piece of that on the poke check. I don't even believe he got a shot away. Eki shot, what a save on the rebound, and the puck is frozen. McSavid with perhaps the save of the year. Absolutely unreal. I, off of the rebound, what a play by Ferlunda to set that play up. They get another one off the one time. It doesn't go in, and McSavid goes into the manual spread eagle. And, and stops that follow-up chance, I, I I have no words. One of the best saves you'll ever see there, folks. McSavid, again, uh, we, we've, over the past couple of years, been able to deem it now as playoff McSavid. This guy just continues to find a different level here in the postseason. Rolanda still looking for their opening goal. Another stop there. Actually, that one may have hit Eki in front. Still don't know if it found its way to the net. Final 10 seconds, one more chance. That one knocked loose. And the final five for Lunda will look to have to kill the clock here. And that will do it. A great response for Feriestad as they snag a one to nothing lead through 20 minutes here in game number four. Sin, I mean, it, it should be the highlight. For once, I think the replay system gets it right. Nope. And it actually won't even be the save we want to see. But it is off of that follow-up one-timer that they had just a few seconds later. Yeah, I, it was... That was still a great save to make again. Tamu trying to cut across uh, his body uh, with that, um, with the one timer going back to the far side, and McSavin able to get a piece of his glove on it and knock it aside. I, yeah, I do hope that we get a look at that save because it was incredible and again mechanically necessary too because. Your reaction time from save animation to save animation can be a bit slower there. So on that initial play of the rebound, he kind of recognized that immediately. He was able to get himself out of it by going into that spread eagle right there. And, I mean, the rest is history. That The second save was was phenomenal, and, and it, looked, it looked great. And it really was huge for his team. It, it, it keeps them in the advantageous position, the one nothing yeah. lead here. And, uh, wow, just clutch. Shame we didn't get another look at that save, but it is what it is. Second period here underway again. Game four between Fralunda and Feriestad. Again, as always, the series count in the top right-hand corner of your screen. And again, sent a little bit later on. It is H-Reds and Granite Gaming. As Granite down 2 to nothing in that series, they need a big day today, or they're not even guaranteed to see the action tomorrow. Again, we're guaranteed, that, as it stands right now, at least one game between Fralunda and FBK, and Eki a chance, Playmaker as well hit the side of the goal. It's not been for a lack of trying for Fralunda 
in terms of trying to make sure that, oh, it's probably only one game tomorrow. McSavid has just been absolutely outstanding. Here is Popa Toplin's shot, and Enke does a great job to take away that rebound. Yeah, off it was right there on the doorstep, and I think you saw him kind of go down on one knee trying to get a whack at it, just unfortunately unable to make contact. They look for a quicker breakout, and you can see from Lunda the forechecking pressure coming out. They're looking for anything to keep that puck alive in the Ozone. Popa Toplin tried to work his way around the defender. Now Playmaker has help coming short side, and again runs out of space. On that attempt, Playmaker again, all over this defense duo, just no space to work with. Now Popatoplin as well, honorary defender in that instance, he had nowhere to go either. Gets that outlet pass, knocked right back. Playmaker might be able to make a play for this one. Sebi Larson wins the foot race. Can the game's lone goal scorer thus far. See what he can do, has a couple of options. Likes to go dump and chase to the far side. Mollen can't win that race, expertly handled by Temu, but an offside call here is just a little bit jumbled up at the blue line where for Lunda. Yeah, and uh, approaching that midway point of the second period here for Lunda, still looking for that opening goal. It's a pretty good situation for Fediestad, but we know the pressure is going to keep mounting from for Lunda. That could open up some interesting possibilities for Fediestad, but again, they don't want to let their foot off the gas pedal either. You can't give for Lunda too much ozone time and look for the counterattacks alone. Almost getting one right there, but a great poke at the line. Playmaker to Eki. Knocked loose, still bouncing around. Playmaker picks it back, or excuse me, Eki back in the corner. Led to a one-timer, good save. Here's Playmaker, and knocked loose. The last moment, Sebi Larson tried to hold up. Shot scores! Unrelenting pressure from Fralunda. Leads to the tying goal. It is Loimu with the one T. Sin, we're tied up at one. That was just a great job. It was Sebi Larson trying to buy a little bit of time. He had players on either side, tried to hug the boards himself and maybe try to kick it out. But the, I think it was Eki down low, scooped it out almost immediately. The second he went into that animation, they worked it over to the side, back up top, where Loimu had crept in and fired that one home. Huge, huge moment there for Fralunda. All of that attacking zone time finally pays off. They find a way to beat McSavid. Right back in on the attack here. Eki again able to win a puck. Down low for Temu. Playmaker back for Potsloff. Gets that switch with his defender. Again, back to the point. Deflection bid there. Good stop by McSavid. Thought he was in pretty good position as well. Send to save that last goal against. Chance for Hipsley he just ran out of space. But it just goes to show how picture perfect you have to be as a goaltender sometimes. It makes what McSavid's done in the series so far that much more impressive. Playmaker, gonna try that short side attempt, doesn't go. Traffic, a little bit too much to weave through. Now six and a half to play here in the second period. Let's see what Potslav can do here. Pulls the trigger, blocker stop by McSaven. And again, a good job handling the rebound. Popa Toflin essentially pushed on side. He shoots one wide. Sebi Larson, shot scores! Afe gets a piece of it in front. Feriestad regain the lead. It's two to one. I'm really, really liking Sevi Larson's game. He's seemingly making all the correct decisions uh, for the most part, especially right there, taking that off the boards and just firing it on net. That's exactly what they needed right there. Just kind of keep that puck going north to south while maintaining possession. And in that set, and in that case, Afe gets the deflection out front and they score. They take the lead back. You're just not going to stop him, Sin. You're not going to stop him. He's going to find a way to get on the board. That's what great goal scorers do. This time out, it is the deflection. What a play attempt there by Potsloff, the toe drag from below the goal line. And again, just ran out of room. Well, the 12 one. Here's Mr. Nipsley stepping up into the play, holding it, poked away by Tamu. Now three minutes to goal, a goal apiece here in the second period. Now Eki trying to go back to Playmaker. Fopa Topham was there. Still having to fend off some pressure. This one's going to go all the way down for icing. It was a pretty close call. Big chance now for, for Lunda in the attacking zone. Yeah, this is a huge, a huge face-off for them. Again, we're running out of time here in this second period. You know they're going to want to at least try to uh, tie it here before getting in that third. Well done by Mon. He's been pretty good on the face-offs in, in this game especially, but uh, throughout the playoffs as well. 11-3 now the counts on the draw. Here is Mullen. He takes the hit. Potsloff. That outlet pass, Loimu stepping up. Now again, Potsloff in the corner around the back, goes all the way to Playmaker. 
Final 30 seconds. Tamu for Loima. Back to Tamu. Great block by Malin. Potslov's backhand knocked away. Loose puck kicks back to the neutral zone. Here goes Afe on the breakaway. And he's denied somehow with a gaping net. It doesn't find its way into the, into the open goal. It'll be 2-1 to one for Feriestad. Sin, that is now two games in a row. You thought for sure we'd have a goal in the final seconds of the period. I am not too sure how that one stayed out. That's Afe's kind of signature move almost we've seen him do on the breakaway. Cutting back to the backhand. He got Kape uh, moving. I'm not too sure if it was uh, poked. Uh, I, I don't know. It was kind of tough to, say, to see. It all happened so quickly. I'm not I mean, seeing it's a registered likely to have shot. Been poked. It could have hit the the pad of Kape. You never quite know, but the fact is, wide open side, you see him pulling backhand, and somehow, some way it doesn't end up in the net. That is the surprise of it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's I mean, that could have been massive for Fetty Stad. And I mean, look at that deflection. That one also just kind of barely uh uh, sort of squeaked into the net right there and again it's gonna come down to that you kind of heard it from Mullen in that pregame could come down to some you know some bounces here and there but you gotta you know stay in a position to win it McSave has done a good job of that Cape is doing a good job of that for his squad as well and you know third period now this is where Falunda is gonna really push and you know if it starts getting down to the wire and they're still down by one that could open up those counterattacks from Fedestad but getting in here on the forecheck looking to take the fight to them what will be, Sin? What will be the next twist to the tail between <laughs> these two teams? I, I'd say very much so. This series uh, living up to the hype of what you want, you know, what you would want to see from a semifinal matchup, uh, let alone a rematch of what we saw last year. Where again, you alluded towards that we saw this matchup last year. It was a sweep for for Lunda. Uh, certainly uh, not so much this time out. This has been incredibly close. I would say with the exception of, of game three, just with how strong of a start for Linda we're able to get off to. But here is Mala now, a bit of space, but Topland tried to pass the Afe in front, and again, the traffic is able to knock that one away. That shot on, blocked down. Eki still going to be there to fight for it. It'll be regained by Fralunda. Fopa Toflin has to be dizzy by the end of the game with how often he utilizes the spin pass, I think, more than anybody else we've seen. It's Eki. Even his way through traffic. 1T taken to the chest and frozen by McSaven. Good save right there by McSaven. Yeah, you're talking about some of those uh, plays. Uh, for Fetis, that on that rush play, I, I feel like it may have been, you know, one pass too many coming back. Or if they were trying to get down low, I think the initial pass from Mullen to Afe through the middle, there was a bit of a gap there would have worked out. But I think that was a case of they had a play in mind and acted on it without sort of reading uh, what the defense was necessarily going to do. Emu shot, rebound, handled very well there by Sebi Larson and jump starts the offense for his team. Mullen on the half wall though, immediately stripped of the puck by Potsloff. Loimu risky pass, does find its way to Playmaker. Has to slow things down a little bit. Now it's play back over into the attacking zone. Potsloff loose puck, swept away by the paddle. One timer again blocked by the traffic in front. We call it the meta. I don't know necessarily if it's the meta when uh, teams have been as good at blocking the shots as they have. Nipsley, the net drive, nearly found its way to the back of the net. Here's Playmaker flying, poke check, puck still loose, and a penalty is called. It will be a penalty shot for Fralunda. Oh, there was a trip right before the flying poke check. I was kind of wondering what had happened, and that's exactly it right there. So, Playmaker. In all alone on the penalty shot. He scores! Glove side picks the corner. We're tied at two. Sin, you can only give him so many chances in all alone. He finally strikes. Yeah, and McSaven, I mean, uh, he's been phenomenal on the breakaways, and it's just you kept getting the chances. You said it eventually, Pleamaker will strike. He ties the game right there, and it's... it's I mean, ten minutes left in the third. It's really anyone's sort of game here, and and this last half of the, half of the period is going to be uh, very interesting, to say the least. That in Game 3, they were playing with fire with all of those breakaway chances given up. You give up another one here. Not much you can do on that attempt for McSavid. Two goals apiece. Eight minutes to play here in Game 4 in what might as well be a must-win for Feriestad. Otherwise, they will have to win three straight games 
in tomorrow's broadcast as McSavid having trouble holding on to this one. Still can't make the cover as the puck finds its way to Afe. See if it happens here. Now Mullen on that left-hand side trying to hold on to it. Great pressure. Popa Toflin to Sebi Larson. He's played a great game so far. Nipsley, Popa Toflin shot blocked down. Looked like that far side corner was open though, so a great block by the defense to get in front of that one as they've been so keen to do. Yeah, it really was. And I think Popa Toflin would have preferred the one time there. What a play by Sebi Larson. Trying to cut to the middle. Ooh, good <laughs> shot for Nipsley. Looked like it handcuffed him a little bit on the pickup. Just couldn't get as hard of a shot off as he wanted. But still another good chance. Nipsley's kind of woken up here offensively a little bit, Sin. I mean, he's not somebody that uh, is known for, for scoring goals at all times. I mean, he had two in the regular season, but he's looked dangerous today as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the threat, you know, it's, it's always kind of there. The fact that he's, you know, beginning to present it now looks good for Fetty Stad. Kind of everyone uh, firing on all cylinders. Here we go again now. A, another rush here from Feria Stad. Sebi Larson stepping up into the play. Loose puck bounces back into the corner. And a good step up there by Fopa Toflin to stop the counterattack. But again, the pressure from Fralunda just a bit too much. And they're back in control. Two minutes to play here in regulation. Playmaker, bit of space, loose puck, and it's in! It's a goal! Potsloff gains the lead off of what might go down, Sin judging by the replay as an own goal. Heartbreak for FBK. That is absolutely heartbreaking. That was Playmaker with an exceptional job to self-sauce it into a good area and then trying to feed it. It was just kind of a bouncing puck that was making its way over to what yeah, in, in where Patsloff was and finds its way in, they might not be done. Ooh, the one-timer just broken up. 50 seconds to go. Feriostad need to tie this or they will face a 3-1 to -one deficit heading into tomorrow's broadcast. A near insurmountable task ahead of them. Loimu gets it over to Pleamaker. See what he can do. He'll dump it around. Good job. 33 now to play for FBK. Mollen finally back on side, I believe, after getting dropped on the previous rush attempt. Penalty is called against Feriestad. It goes from bad to worse. Yeah, that's the mo That's exactly what they didn't need right there. And you saw from Frolunda there, not a single four checker. They've been four checking all game with two guys minimum. The second they got that lead with less than a minute, you know that they're saying, okay, no one get beat deep off. You know, they're no, you know they're gonna be looking for it. You cannot allow yourselves to get beat deep in that scenario. None of them even crossed the blue line. It was all five men back looking to protect against any sort of counterattack, any sort of, uh, you know, rush opportunity that Feristad is going to look for. And they're up against it. 21 seconds is enough time, but they have, you know, one man down, you know, right off this face off. Expect to see Temu or Loimu, maybe even both of them, jetting back out of the zone. I, at least one of them is going to do that because you, you got to feel like Afe is going to try you know, to start t just to get a step on one of those defensemen. They need to try a slap pass play. We haven't really seen them break it out. This is the time if they're going to break it out to do so. The timeouts have been called. The energy bars will be replenished here. So we get another look at that goal in the penalty shot. It wasn't read poorly by McSavid at all. He just couldn't get the glove on it. Sometimes the shots just beat someone. And this is the uh, own goal play. It was Okay, I initially thought it was a self-sauce. It was a shot attempt that got blocked, and then he sort of passed it over, and then, well, the rest is history. I mean, just a bouncing puck. Uh, no uh, no remorse <laughs> when it comes to uh, when it comes to goaltenders. Dangerous intentions here now for Playmaker. He'll hold it down low, killing the clock. Botsloff has it, too. They have to keep off a high in the zone. Playmaker scores on the backhand. 4-2 to for Lunda and a 3-1 to one series lead heading into tomorrow's broadcast. Yeah, that's just what we expect. Incredible situational awareness from Fralunda right there and kind of only going for that shot when it's, you know, they know it's pretty much over. And I mean, yeah, we knew it would it would come to that. You have to keep off high in the zone, looking for that play, trying to get that one slap slap fast opportunity. It doesn't come in Fralunda will walk away with this win as well and uh, walk away with a 3-1 to one series lead. A stranglehold over Fetiastad. Heartbreak for FBK. Looked like this might just have been our game, or, you know, th their game. It, it, from their perspective, the our game, of course. And then it's in. It just goes out the door. The, the penalty mm -hmm. shot, the tough bounce in front. 
And if you are FBK at this point, you're thinking, okay, this is our game, and it gets away, and now you have a three to one deficit. It's it's gonna be a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, that's just. I mean, even when you think back to the way that penalty, uh, the penalty shot kind of came to be, you kind of wonder what the way the flying poke check was coming out would the initial chance have, uh, you know, been stopped, which in which case the penalty shot would not have, you know, even existed. But those kind of things are just going to taunt you and they're going to kind of taunt you when you lay your head on that pillow and try to sleep. If you're Fetty sad, you just got to try to find some way to get around it. I mean, there's no getting around the 3-1 deficit. There's no getting around how heartbreaking that last game was, of course, but you still have a job to do and it's not over until until you're over. And we know that Fetty sad is going to keep fighting. McSave is going to keep fighting in that crease and that team is going to keep looking to try to produce offensively. And it didn't work out in that one. And for Lunda, just one win away, one win away from being back in the championship round. This entire season for them, Sin, they didn't make any lineup changes. The reason for that, not all that difficult. They wanted, they had confidence in the team. They wanted to get back to the final and get that redemption for last season's shortcoming in the championship against Atreds. And right now, that is certainly, it certainly looks to be the direction, as you see, like how quickly Playmaker was able to take that away for that first goal. Yeah. I mean, it's, in, it's just one of those things where right now, if you're a betting person, you're, you're looking at a Frolunda H-Reds rematch. It is going to take a lot of work for FBK and for Granite uh, to, you know, prove people wrong at this stage. Yeah, it absolutely is, and... You know, for for Fetiestad, I mean, you can think just by the way the games have gone that they the games have gone, excuse me, that they would have a, a slightly better chance. But you know, for Lundo, I think in both of these games they they look to be the better team. They had the more shots, they had the more time on attacks. We get another, yeah, that's just wow, <laughs> just the bounces. I think Playmaker was it was it looked like a pass attempt over to the right, but I think it was just a bounce as he was going for a puck pickup and then. Uh, several bounces as Pasloff was just trying to corral the puck and ended up uh, <laughs> kind of guiding it into the net. But bounces can happen. You know, the point is to kind of put yourself in a situation where a one bad bounce is not going to cost you. And uh, Fede said just simply wasn't able to get enough goals to make that the case. A tough, tough break to say the least for FBK. Again, as we've mentioned, tomorrow we'll see the end of that series. It'll be right here on Sports Gamer, so make sure to tune in for that. However, what we don't yet know is whether or not that will be the only series that we cover. Because on the flip side of our brief intermission, Granite Gaming, they trail 2 to nothing in their series against our defending champions in HREDS. Granite will look to stave off elimination and guarantee themselves at least a game tomorrow. They need to win one of two at the very, very least. So we'll see what happens. Again, for London now, one win away from going back to the championship round. Will H-Reds secure their spot in said round right here tonight? Again, we'll find out. We'll be back after a brief intermission. We hope you stick with us. Two more games coming up here on tonight's broadcast.